So the first thing we're going to do is add some milk followed by some water. You can just add the water to the same place where you poured the milk just to save it, I guess. Then we're going to add some yeast and mix it with a spoon. You want to make sure the milk is kind of warm, by the way. It's going to make the yeast kind of rise faster. We're going to add some oil then and mix it together. I'm not going to check if my yeast is alive because I just bought it on the day of filming. But if you want to, you can leave it for about eight minutes. You're then going to add it to a food processor and you're going to add a little bit of flour at a time. The point is to not add too much flour right away because you can always add more, but you can't take it away. You're then going to knead everything in the food processor and the goal is to knead it until it's only slightly sticky and all the ingredients are completely combined. Add flour if it's way too sticky, but then when you've added enough of it, you're going to take it out and put it into a floured bowl. Then you're going to mold everything into a circle or kind of a sphere shape. If you've done everything right, you should be rewarded with a nice smooth dough ball, which we're then going to place inside the same bowl. And then we're going to cover it with some oil and then we're going to roll it around just to make sure everything is covered. We're then going to cover it with either a damp towel, some foil or some plastic wrap. We're then going to rise this dough for about two hours. And while that's happening, we're going to make the cheese blend. So this consists of two cheeses. The first one is just normal feta cheese that you can find in most grocery stores. You're just going to crumble it up. And by the way, all the measurements will be in the description down below. The second cheese is actually a Georgian cheese called Suluguni, which I don't know if you can find in most stores, but if you can, just use some low moisture mozzarella. It's a perfectly fine substitute. You're then going to mix everything together and observe the beautiful cheese blend that you've created. And then we're going to put that to the side and we're going to work on our dough that has risen by now. Plop the dough onto a floured cutting board and just flatten it out with your hands. You can use a rolling pin as well, but just find that using your hands is way easier. You're going to split the dough into two with a knife and then you're going to place it on some parchment paper. We're then going to flatten the dough out some more with our hands and at this point we're probably going to have to use a rolling pin to get it really flat. Once you flatten the dough with a rolling pin, you can add your cheese inside of the dough. You're going to add these two parallel lines that kind of look like parallel lines. Then you're going to fold the dough over and seal the ends together. It's really important that there's no cheese gaps that can occur. Basically, when you're going to be cooking it, if there's going to be any gaps the cheese can pour out, you don't want that. So make sure everything is sealed very tightly. You're going to repeat that entire process for your other dough as well. Oh, and by the way, this is just called khachapuri. I didn't mention it at all in this video in the title or in the thumbnail, but that's what it's called. You're then going to split the parchment paper into two, place it on a baking sheet, add the rest of your cheese into the center, and then you're going to bake it at about 450 degrees Fahrenheit. The entire process is going to take about 15 minutes, but it could vary depending on your oven. You're then going to take these things that humans call spoons, and you're going to make an opening inside of the khachapuri. The point is that we want an egg inside of it, so if you don't do the step, then the egg is just going to pour out and you're going to have a bad time. Once you've added the egg into the center, you're going to put it back into the oven for about 3 to 4 minutes or until the egg is about 80% cooked. You're then going to add some butter on the inside and optionally you can add some salt as well. Now, at this point, you're going to take a fork and you're going to beat everything in the center together. This is a non-negotiable, unskippable step. And if you don't do this, you will be banned from the country of Georgia. Other than that, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.